I buried him. I discovered him. I spoke to him. And on that day, that glorious day, three days after he died, we went to the tomb, and it was empty. empty. I was one of them, you know, a Pharisee. I was an elder, one of the Sanhedrin, appointed to sit as a tribunal and pass judgment over Jewish law. So when Jesus started coming around, preaching, performing, and performing miracles, and amassing followers, it was expected that I would fall in line with my Sanhedrin brothers, that I would join them in their distrust of this mysterious man. But the truth is, I was enthralled by him. A man who could heal the lame with his touch? A man who could make the blind see? I had to meet, to meet this man, talk to him, learn why God has brought him here, and allowed him to perform such marvels. So in the dead of night, I went to him. And do you know what he said to me? He said, For the God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Eternal life for believing this man standing before me, a man claiming to be the Son of God. I had to know more. I guess you could say we're comfortable. Well, more than comfortable, I suppose. Well to do, prosperous. But that doesn't mean we lived a charming life. I was not well, afflicted, distressed. That is, until Jesus came and took it all away. The thing I don't think people realize about Jesus is that he didn't just help the poor. He didn't care about money or status. He cared about people. And when he saw suffering, he did everything in his power to fix it. And what power! He changed my life that day. Not just by healing my body and mind, but by healing my soul. From that day on, everything I had, money, influence, it was his. And wherever he would go, I would follow. Sure, I'd heard of him. Jesus, that is. I'd more than heard of him. I'd followed him, helped him spread his message, traveled all over. I might not have been one of the twelve, but I was there, a true believer, which was why it was so hard for me when he died. Hard for all of us. We dedicated our lives to him, you know? He was the one who was supposed to save us all, and yet here we were, left behind without him, the Roman soldiers still breathing down our necks, the Roman leaders still sitting high and mighty on their thrones. We were lost, helpless. We didn't know where to turn. When Jesus died, we all had one question in our minds. How can this be? Where will we turn? Why is this happening? What, what do, we do we do, do now? now? Thank you. 
Through it all, through it all, it is well, Lord. Through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you, and it is well with me.
Till the stones move for good, for the land that conquered dead. In the terrors from their tombs, and the angels stood in awe. For the souls of all who come to the Father are restored. In the church of Christ was born, then the Spirit lived a play. Now this gospel to the poor shall not fear, shall not faint. By His blood and in His name, He is free to lie and free. For the love of Jesus Christ, who has resurrected me. They had their minds made up before they even laid eyes on him. Jesus' followers grew in numbers every day and stretched all over Galilee. They knew they were losing control. I reminded my brothers in the Sanhedrin that a man must be allowed to speak for himself before he is condemned. But the plan was already in place, the wheels already in motion. When it was done, when Jesus had been crucified and died, I went to him once more. I brought a mixture of myrrh and aloe, and together with Joseph of Arimathea, we buried his body for bur we prepared his body for burial. When we were done, we brought his body to a tomb in the nearby garden. As Jesus and I walked away, as Joseph and I walked away, I stopped and looked back, wondering, what was God's plan for his son now? I don't think any of us were prepared for what we saw when we went to the tomb. There were three of us: Mary Magdalene, James's mother Mary, and myself. We had brought with us special spices, preparing to anoint Jesus' body. When right away, we noticed something was amiss. The stone, the great, big, heavy stone, had been rolled aside. And what's more, Jesus' body was missing. Well, we don't know what to make of it. Had someone stolen his body? Moved it without telling anyone? We didn't have to wonder long. Because suddenly, out of nowhere, a great light shone, and two men appeared and said, Why do you look for the living among the dead? Jesus had risen, just as he said he would. There's nothing left to do but go and tell the others. We were in shock. Word was beginning to spread concerning what the women had witnessed at the empty tomb and their encounter with the angels. Later that day, my husband was walking with a friend on the way to our small village called Emmaus. Suddenly, a man came up and began to walk beside them. He asked them what they were talking about. What else is there to talk about? Jesus, of course. They told the man everything, who Jesus was, how he'd been captured and crucified, what the woman saw in the tomb, and how Jesus' body was missing. As they continued down the road, the three of them discussed scriptures and the prophecies until they reached our house in the village. They invited the man to stay with us. And that's when everything changed. As we sat for supper, the man stood and picked up the bread. He gave thanks and broke it and gave it to us. And in that moment, our eyes were open. Our hearts were open. The tomb was open. It was him. Jesus. He was alive. alive. Everything he had told us had been true. Everything the prophets promised had been realized. Everything we've been waiting for was finally here. A Messiah. A Savior. The Son of God. Not here to save us from the Roman soldiers. Or Roman leaders. He had come to save us from sin and death. 
He had come to give us the greatest gift we could ever hope for. That all those who believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. On the day we discovered the empty tomb. The discarded burial shroud. Jesus standing before us, alive once more. Everything, everything changed. changed. For when Jesus emerged from that tomb, having battled death and won, he breathed new life into all of us. And our light. Our faith. And our hope for a better world were all resurrected. resurrected. I've seen shame No. 
Happy Easter. Happy Easter. What a joy it is to be gathered here with you in God's house and online. We're thankful to uh, just be gathered as God's people. It's a joy to worship, especially on such a joyous and wonderful and incredible, extraordinary kind of occasion like Easter. Uh, and so we're glad that you're here. Uh, as we worship today, um, we are just uh, encouraged by your presence, but also your community together as the body of Christ. As you look around today, this is a great opportunity to say, I'm not alone as I follow Jesus. God has actually brought me into community, brought me into the body of Christ, and here in this place, you can see that expressed. And so I hope that you can hold on to that as you go today. Uh, and also, one of the things that we like to do when we gather together is to greet each other. And uh, I know that might take a few more minutes today, but I'm going to encourage you just to stand up, find somebody around you in a moment, maybe somebody you didn't come here with, and just say, Happy Easter, or God bless your worship, or God's peace be with you, or it's good to see you. So let's greet each other in the name of the Lord. continue with our opening words together. May the light of Christ, rising in glory, dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. He is risen. He is risen indeed. So shall we. Alleluia. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over us. Christ has risen from the dead. By this I know that you delight in me. My enemy will not shout in triumph over me. But you have upheld me because of my integrity and set me in the presence forever. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it.
Amidst the joy and celebration of this morning, we take time to acknowledge the areas of our lives that separate us from God and from one another. So we pray together, Almighty God, you overcame death once for all by raising Jesus from the grave. We ask you now for your forgiveness as we struggle with the powers of sin in our lives. It affects our thoughts, words, and actions. Raise us out of our fears and frailty who may share in the hope of Christ's resurrection. Amen. It says in the word of God that in the resurrection, God gives us a testimony that what happened on the cross is validated. And so in the stead of the command of Jesus who died for you on the cross, God declares you holy, at one with him, forgiven. Your sins are gone. Let's celebrate that.
invite you to be seated this morning. Uh, but if there are any children that would like to come forward for a children's message this morning, you're welcome to do that. Just come grab a seat somewhere on the steps up here. We'd love to have you come forward. Well, good morning, everyone. Happy Easter, and uh, it's good to see you today. So <clears throat> we just sang a song that said, sing a little louder, and louder and louder, our praises are going to go. So do you think that you could make a joyful praise noise with me this morning on three? Just make your best Easter joyful praise, okay? One, two, three. Yeah! That was pretty good. All right. You guys are excited, huh? Easter's, Easter's a good day, isn't it? It's a joyful day. Why is Easter such a joyful day? Yeah. Jesus came from the tomb. Jesus rose from the tomb, yeah. Is that what you're going to say too? Yeah. Yeah, so actually, uh, so that's a good answer. And what I want you to do is actually look behind you, okay? You can kind of look through whoever's sitting behind you, whatever. And you're going to see a bunch of flowers right there in front of the altar, and there's a little white cross that says, uh, his love never fails. And then there's also this sort of circle thing kind of hidden in among the flowers. Anybody know what that is? What is that? That's a crown of thorns. That's right. But this is Easter. There's a crown of thorns up there. Yes. Yeah, that's right. He is. So that crown of thorns reminds us in the midst of all the cool things of Easter, the beautiful colors and the loud praises and all the wonderful stuff and the music that's so well played for us and sung for us and everything, it reminds us that it's joyful because of what he did for us, that Jesus died on the cross for us, that he suffered all those things, he took all of our sin on him, and then it couldn't keep him dead. The tomb couldn't keep him in. And so on Easter, we celebrate his resurrection, which means that we are people who live with great joy. As we follow Jesus, we can be really joyful people. We can make joyful noise and we can sing and we can praise. And sometimes it's kind of hard to remember that in life, isn't it? Because school's hard or class is hard or things that are going on in our family and our life are hard. And it's hard to be joyful sometimes, but it's okay to be joy-filled people on Easter. So I'm going to ask you to do one more thing with me, okay? I'm going to ask you to say in a moment, we're going to say as loud as you can, Happy Easter, okay? Usually we greet each other that would say, hey, Happy Easter to you, okay? But what we're saying now is it is a happy Easter. You're saying that's what today is. It's happy and it's Easter because Jesus is risen. And you're going to tell everybody out there as loud as you can, louder and louder, we're going to sing praise, right? That's what we just said in that song. You think you can do it with me? Okay, louder than last time, all right? Happy Easter on three. One, two, three. Joy. Nice job. Thank you, everybody. You can return to your seats. If you'd like to grab one of these sheets, you're welcome to do that and celebrate Easter. The Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel this morning is found in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. Could you please rise for the Gospel? <laughs> I saw Kurtz then. Thank you. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. And they were saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone 
had been rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were alarmed. And he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him? But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the word of God. Amen. I invite you to be seated this morning. Well, he is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. That's our, our standard Easter greeting, right? So maybe you've said that multiple, multiple times in your life. Maybe that's new to you this morning and you aren't quite sure what to say. That's all right. I'm glad that you're here and glad that you're celebrating with us that He is risen. As we think about... Um, Easter this morning. I have a, a little different question for you, though. Have you ever, have you ever left something behind? Yeah. Like you intended to bring it, but you left it behind, yeah. and maybe it wasn't a good thing. Jesus actually leaves something behind on Easter, but he does it on purpose. We're going to talk about that in a minute. So if you would pray with me, gracious Almighty God, you have gathered us together here with one another around your word, but also in your presence as you have come to us. And so we are grateful to be gathered as your people to celebrate Easter, the resurrection of our Savior. 
So with the psalmist, we pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of those gathered would be acceptable in your sight. Our strength, our rock, our redeemer. Amen. Another question for you as we go as well. Uh, what did you always get? If you had Easter baskets, what was the thing that you loved or always got in your Easter basket? You don't have to shout it out, but, but maybe it was eggs. Maybe it was peeps. I'm sorry if it was, you know. Or maybe you love peeps. That's cool, right? Uh, okay. We can still get along. It's fine. Maybe, maybe you're like me and, and you got the chocolate bunny. And I don't mean like that, that hollow one where you bite into it and there's air and it's like a total letdown. I mean like the, it's the whole solid one, right? And you would eat it, and, and, and maybe you started in one particular place when you ate that chocolate bunny. How many of you start at the feet? <laughs> How many of you start at the ears? You're all right. Good job. Okay. Yeah. That's where I, that's where I start anyway, okay? If you start at the feet, that's cool. We can still get along too, right? Yeah, those are some of the things that we think of when we think of Easter, and And as we eat that chocolate bunny and we bite those ears off, maybe you were like me as a kid and you'd pretend like the bunny couldn't hear anything, right, and run around and maybe you still did that this morning, I don't know, right? But nonetheless, as we come here this morning, as God gathers us and and He shares with us from Mark chapter 16, my hope is that today what what we hear what we hear and take with us is the reality of the resurrection for each of us, and that it's a personal thing. So, as we think about Easter, there's a lot of things that make Easter, Easter. What are some of the things that make Easter, Easter for you? Maybe it's some of the kind of over-the-top stuff the incredible breakfast that the youth put on, or the chocolate bunnies that no longer have ears, or the baskets, or maybe it's the special Easter outfits that we're donning this morning, or, or it could be the little Easter eggs hidden about the house or the yard with the little treats in it. Maybe it's the, the powerful hymns, the extra instrumentation, the beautiful songs and moving songs that are sung and, and given to us. Maybe it's the family photos. All of these things make for a truly spectacular moment in time on Easter morning. But also, with all the extraordinariness of this experience, it can be easy to pass over the deeply personal nature of Easter. Really, the reason for all the extravagance is because of how personal this is. In fact, in Mark's gospel, chapter 16, he, he speaks about it in just eight verses. And so the first few verses of that are this. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so they might go and anoint him. That was what they were going to do. They were going to go find Jesus off in a tomb. And in verse 2 it says, very early they got up. The first day of the week, the sun had risen, and so they went to the tomb. They even have a question for each other as they're going, because they're not quite sure how this plan's going to play out. Did you hear what's not there? The, the delicious biscuits and gravy breakfast isn't there, right? I hope that you got to have some of that this morning. The baskets of candy, the chocolate bunnies with half-eaten ears, the hallelujahs, the trumpets and timpanies, organs and songs, it's not there. There was no chancel area with Easter lilies, no packed house, just these three women on their way to a tomb. That first Easter was a a different experience than it is for us today. 
Consider the sunrise, for example. I wonder what their sunrise was like. Were anybody up for the sunrise this morning? If you were up for sunrise service and are here, oof, good on you, right? It's sunny out now, but today's sunrise wasn't quite that way. I think when we think of a sunrise, we hope for that brilliant bursting forth of the sun as it peaks over the horizon and rays of sunshine go everywhere, and it's beautiful and glorious. But sometimes the sunrise looked like it did this morning, overcast, cloudy, kind of hard to tell if the sun's even there, but you can see a little bit more gradually, so you figure the sun must have come up. I wonder if that's how this sunrise was, that first Easter. Maybe it was bursting forth with brilliant color, or maybe it was overcast, cloudy, subdued. It seems to be that way, at least in the way that Mark is sharing about the resurrection. Because there's no big fanfare. There's just women going to a tomb. And so he mentions these three, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome, and, and he's mentioned them before. They all witnesses to the crucifixion as well which means they know what they're going to expect. They know what's to come. And they know that the tomb is sealed. So they ask themselves this question, right? Who will roll away the stone for us? We don't know how this is going to go. They have some questions, maybe some doubts, maybe some uncertainties on that first Easter. I love these verses because I think at times, even on Easter, we still come with questions. We still have uncertainties in our life too. Not everything is perfectly figured out, lined out, and we have an answer to everything. In fact, maybe this morning, even as we start with, He is risen and we're excited about it and proclaim it, there's still some questions lingering in our own minds. Maybe there's still some some stress over a recent health diagnosis that we bring with us this morning. Maybe there's some emptiness of a loved one who doesn't get to be here with us today. Maybe it's just rising costs and wondering how we're going to make ends meet. Maybe it's violence or wars or disasters, relationship challenges and struggles. Maybe it's coming graduation and wondering well, what's going to happen in the next stage of life and a career and a future. Maybe it's the loss of a life or a child. Or There's questions. There's uncertainties. Easter doesn't pretend like that doesn't exist. It embraces those who have questions and uncertainties. Just like the women who, despite all of their questions, go to the tomb. And just like us who gather, even with uncertainties. And so in the next verses, Mark says, looking up as they got there, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. I like how Mark says it, it was very large. Like, just so you know, this was a huge stone. To add to their surprise, right? How did it get rolled? How was it rolled away? That had to be a bit alarming to them. In fact, I think that's why Mark says it was huge, because it reminds the reader and it reminds us that this is a, an alarming thing. This is not something that they would have expected. And so their, their alarm and their uncertainty grows as they see the stone is rolled away. They're astonished, fearful even, and trembling, as it says later. Are those the typical emotions and experiences that you think of on Easter morning? Probably not. Right? We like bright colors. We love uplifting hymns and songs, and we like joy and kids saying, Happy Easter, right? And those are all good things and wonderful things and things that we should do. But it seems different than this first Easter. It's different for us because we have the benefit of knowing the whole rest of the story. We know that the resurrection of Jesus is the solid rock on which our hope comes. For them, they weren't sure. So they see, uh, they, they enter the tomb in verse 5. They saw a young man sitting at the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were 
alarmed. We know him to be an angel, but they were alarmed. These are their experiences first Easter. In fact, the end of the reading, as it was read so well for us earlier, verse 8 says, And they went out and fled from the tomb. Trembling, astonishment seized them. They said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Afraid, astonishment, trembling, running. That's what happened the first Easter? It's a different way of celebrating Easter, right? At least hopefully that's not our response this morning, okay? We don't have to run from here trembling and afraid and fearful. We get to leave here with joy. But they had a good reason to be fearful. Questions and uncertainties still lingered for them too. Even though what they had heard is the good news that Jesus was risen, just as we have heard it. But still, it can be difficult to believe. It can still be a struggle. It can still be hard. There's difficulties and uncertainties in our life too. And those things just continue. They don't stop. They come one after another. And Easter... Easter doesn't just make all that stuff magically go away. Maybe that's helpful to say sometimes. See, the the truth is, it doesn't just make all that stuff magically go away. Because it's not just this temporary kind of escape from life. Easter is actually what enables us to engage in life every day. The joyful things, the difficult things. Because we engage in it now with hope. We engage in it now with certainty. We live now with confidence. See, the tomb was empty. That's what the women found. That's what we know about Easter. But though they fled, though they were afraid, they didn't go away empty-handed. And this morning you don't either. However you've come, full of great joy and excitement or still struggling with questions and uncertainties, there was something left behind, something that Jesus left behind. Just to consider the point of what's left behind for a moment, uh, my wife and kids enjoyed their spring break at uh, their grandma and grandpa's house in Iowa. And uh, that's a good drive away. It takes most of the day to get there. And so they pack all their things, and they pack the stuff they want to play with. They pack their clothes, and they pack their little stuffies that they like to sleep with. And about an hour after they left, I walked through the living room and found this bag. It's our youngest daughter's bag. And sticking out of it there is Lammy. <laughs> that's her stuffy. She has three, identical, because if we lose one, we've got two more, right? Parents, you know what it's like, right? But guess how many were in that bag? All three? (laughs) Yeah. And so there it sat for the week. Lammy was left behind. What comfort could there be? How could we sleep at night? The security seemed to be gone. It was left behind. Usually when we leave things behind, it's not a good thing. It's hard and it's difficult. But Jesus does it differently. Jesus leaves behind something for us on Easter, just like he did for the women. And it's not a bad thing, but he does it on purpose. In verse 5 through 7, we see who's left behind there for us. The young man, the, the angel sitting there, and he says to them, Don't be alarmed. He's risen. He's not here. Jesus leaves behind someone who knows what they're dealing with as they come full of fear, full of uncertainty, full of alarm, full of trembling, wanting to flee. Seeing a tomb that has been burst open and wondering, great, now what have they done with Jesus? He leaves behind someone who knows what they're going through, who has witnessed the resurrection. He leaves behind for them 
someone to talk to and someone to share a good word with them. In fact, that's a word for us too. That no matter what you're going through in your life this Easter, the days before and the days to come, there will be someone there. It may not be the people we always thought or expected or wanted to be there. But God is there. And He's also put you with all of these people for someone to confide in. In other words, whatever you're going through in life, God knows. And He leaves someone with a message for you, with a word for you. For the women, He said, do not be alarmed. I know who you're seeking. I know what you're looking for. He knows. And He says, He's risen. He's not here. The angel is left behind specifically for those women, specifically for what they're going through, and says, do not be alarmed. God leaves behind one for us, and Jesus promises to continue to be with us, one that we can talk to, one that promises to hear us and know what we're dealing with. He goes on to tell him this. In verse 7, go and and tell his disciples. And so they go, and it says, there you will see him just as he told you. See, the angel angel knows what Jesus told them. The angel knows that Jesus said he's going to raise, he's going to rise from the dead, that the grave can't hold him. He testifies to the truth of God's word, a word that can be depended on, saying, this is what Jesus said, and guess what's happened? Everything that he has said. And the resurrection that we celebrate here on Easter of our Savior Jesus is a fulfillment of that very word. And so Jesus leaves behind this promise that he will do as he said and will continue to do as he says. See, what the women had that first Easter was not all the other stuff that is wonderful and good and right for us to do, but what they had was someone who knew what they were going through, a word of promise that is true and dependable. But they also had a community. As he says in verse 7, go and tell the disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. In other words, the angel sends them out to the disciples, sends them into community to know that they're not going through this alone, that that no matter what fears and trembling they're leaving with, they don't have to walk through that on their own. This journey is not one of a single life. This is a journey of our life together, a community of faith. And that's what he gives to us as well. He's left that behind for us too as he brings us into the body of Christ. As we go forth and and seeing God's word, his promises, and him at work in this world, he's not leaving you alone. But here's a few things that the, the man at the tomb didn't do for the women. One, he didn't make them feel all better. They still left They still fled. They still had questions, and he didn't answer all of their questions either. It's not necessarily what Easter does. But he does very simply announce, he is risen, he is not here. Just like he told you. In other words, today we walk away knowing that Jesus has done exactly what he said he would do. And that's dependable. And so that can transform our life. That can change our life. It doesn't necessarily remove all of our fear or all of our questions, but it does take fear and question and uncertainty out of a place of prominence in our life so that the truth and the confidence of Jesus can live there again. In other words, it continues to drive us back to what he proclaimed, this young man proclaimed from the tomb, that Jesus is risen and what what God says he will do, he will do. That Jesus really did rise from the dead. 
and we know it to be true. In other words, as you live today, this moment on Easter that we celebrate and the resurrection of Jesus is not just a moment in time, although it is a wonderful and glorious occasion this morning. But the resurrection isn't just that moment. It's the person of Jesus Christ who goes with you, who saved you, who knows you and all that you go through, and whose promises can be trusted. See, the tomb was empty. Jesus wasn't found there because that's not where he's going to be found. He's going to come and find you, and he's going to bring to you life because he knows what you deal with. And so he's going to give you a true word, and he's going to bring you into community. And Easter, what Easter is, is a glorious celebration, but even more personal than just a celebration. Easter is a life that's been given to you. A life lived with the person, with the promises, and with the people gathered around you of the resurrected Jesus. He's risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Happy Easter. Okay. Uh, that's a good idea. Start, starting to sound like 4th of July on Easter.
you have a seat. So um, we're going to take a few minutes now for those of you who are visiting here today, just take a few minutes to slow down and just reflect upon what Pastor Greg shared with us this morning. And one of the things he shared with us is that even though we are living as resurrection people, that does not mean all of the challenges in our life are gone. I don't know what it is that's going on in your life or your family's life, but we would like you to take just a few seconds to lift up to God and just remember as a person of the resurrection, we can find confidence and we can find his power to get us through this. So Heavenly Father, this evening, this morning, I praise you that you've given us the opportunity to celebrate and remember that your son Jesus has conquered death and is empowering us to see the challenges before us through the lens of the resurrection. We are surrounded by a group of people in our life. We are surrounded by a power. So I would ask your God today, you would help me with. We acknowledge that Terry and Chuck Norm and Mark and Ken and Dee and Andrea, Julie and Richard and Olson, Becky and John and Stan and Bella, Lindsay and Jeanette and Sarah and Tim, Medea and Delaney and Trudy and Todd, Ray and Mark and Lee and Sarah, Jacob and Bethany and Brandon and Todd, Chris and Bruce all need healing. We acknowledge that in your hands is the power to heal or not to heal. So we humbly ask, have mercy on these, your people, and give them healing. We acknowledge today that there are people that are in this room who have lost loved ones, and their loved one is not sitting next to them, maybe because of a divorce, because they've been, um, they've come to be with you. So we lift up those people who today are hurting and in sorrow, we lift up you, Daryl and Tracy and Diane, at the passing of, their, of Dennis. For those who are uh, in the middle of war zones, those who are in the middle of a high crime uh, place, neighborhood, those who are in homes where there is violence, one or two uh, adults or children are just um, damaging it. We acknowledge that these people are going to need comfort and peace and encouragement, and we acknowledge that they're not alone. Inspire them to find like-minded and helpful people to walk through, carry them through this, this time. We ask you to be with all of those today who are proclaiming the, proclaiming the death and resurrection of Jesus throughout the world. May they be fruitful and find brothers and sisters everywhere to encourage them onward. For the men and women, that's, men and women that are deployed, or protecting us locally, or at the borders, we'd ask you to protect them, bring them back safely to their families. We ask, dear God, that you would be with those who are leading us, that they do so in a way that is um, way that is according to our Constitution, and that we may live peaceful lives here. But on this day of joy, we just give you thanks for the hope we've been given. So we give you thanks for the, the gift of a new sister in Penny Lane McCain. For Ben and Amanda, who are walking as husband and wife today, one week after their marriage. For Jackie and Jess and Dee and Kaylin, all who you've brought healing to. What a great joy it is, dear God, to know that you answer prayers and are doing more things than we could possibly even imagine. And so with confidence today, we put our petitions at your feet. And in the name of Jesus, we trust that you will answer them at your time. We pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Amen. Would you stand one more time? May Jesus who goes before you, may he lead you. 
May Jesus, who's underneath you, uplift you, sustain you. May Jesus, the living Jesus behind you, encourage you forward. May the living Jesus, who's over you, overshadow you and protect you. And may the living Jesus, who dwells within you, inspire you to be the people that you've been created, redeemed, or being made holy to be. And please enjoy this day. Go in peace.
stone that you rolled away Candy? <laughs> 